Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we started cross-examining Gumshoe and we also met the fearful Francisca Von Karma, who's the prosecutor this time around. She's of course the daughter of Manfred Von Karma from the previous game and she's pretty terrifying. She wields a whip, she says the word fool a lot, and has tons of other weird character traits. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this and start cross-examining Gumshoe. Why didn't you say so in your testimony earlier? Uh, you're kinda scary today, you know, pal. Come now, Mr. Wright. There is no need for that kind of attitude in my court. Uh, alright, just please stop glaring at me like that. It's kind of it's kind of awesome to have Phoenix be the one to uh, kind of scare the judge for a bit, because we've had to deal constantly with prosecutors doing something, judge saying like, hey, that's probably not good, and then the prosecutors uh, doing something and then the judge being like, okay, it's fine. Uh, so it's nice to have the judge be like, okay, you can do that to us. Maya's costume. Yeah, she was wearing this when we arrested her. Maya. She's wearing her channeling costume today, too. Is she not allowed to wear anything else? As you can see, it's covered in blood. This blood on the costume. Lab results show that it was the victim's blood. Hmm. So there is blood from the victim on the defendant's clothes. Definitely not good. Ugh. Hmm. Were there any other clues you could glean from the, this piece of evidence? That's not how you spell that. Um, well... If you must change the topic, then the good detective here must testify again. But too bad, not enough time. Time to move on. Ah, yes, Mr. Va Miss Von Karma is perfectly correct. Ugh, now even the judge is on her side. But if, I, but if I bite off more than I can chew here, what should I do? Rule number one of Ace Attorney, always press further. Why is Miss Von Karma suddenly putting up resistance? There must be a reason as to why she suddenly threw out an objection like that. There must be a clue somewhere on this costume. I just have to look harder. Mr. Wright, Miss Von Karma's logic is perfect. There's no way for you to poke a hole in it. Keep that wording in mind for a little bit later. Ugh, looks like my time is up. So about the costume. There is one little thing. Your Honor. Actually, there is something very wrong with this piece of evidence. Ooh, what? What are you talking about, Pearl? Where is this problem you are talking about? I've come this far. There's no turning back now. The problem I have with this piece of evidence is here. It's the hole. I want to make sure that it's as close to the center of the crosshairs as possible. I asked the court to please take a look at the sleeve of this costume. The sleeve. There is a tiny hole here. Uh, a hole? But that wasn't in the report. Hold on. What's this around the hole? It smells faintly of gunpowder. G gunpowder? No one ever told me! A hole that smells of gunpowder. It looks like I found the hole I was looking for. Your Honor, the only logical conclusion you can make is that it must be a bullet hole. Order, order, order. This is a very grave matter. It's best we correct the court record first before anything else. So now it says, close my eyes wearing at the time of the murder, check the touch button, and now we can see in full detail the blood and the bullet hole, most importantly. Sorry about that. I guess we messed up, so. It, is she actually smiling? 
What else is she hiding? Pull yourself together, detective. That tiny hole doesn't change a thing. The strength of the evidence still holds. Continue with your testimony. That just now was a fluke, nothing more. How can you say something like that? This is a huge oversight. While I agree it is a mistake on the part of the police. What Prosecutor Von Karma has said is true. The evidence still stands. If you do not find a more definitive problem with the evidence, then... No way! Detective Gumshoe, please continue with your testimony. Y yes sir! The defendant attacked and killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. He wasn't fighting back? How do you know if he was or wasn't? We can find no evidence that the victim put up any sort of struggle, pal. Hmm. So did the murderer have a fight with the victim or not? Depending on this, the circumstances around this murder changed drastically. Ugh. We're in real trouble now. If only I had something to prove that the victim did fight back. That Von Karma. She thinks she can decide the verdict with this testimony alone. I have to somehow find a critical contradiction and then I'll have her. So, the answer for this one is before... Uh, first of all, you have to press this statement and you have to go through all the stuff that we just did. Uh, and, you know, get the bullet hole added to the court record. And then, that directly contradicts this statement where he says uh, that Dr. Gray was not fighting back. But if he wasn't fighting back, then how is there a bullet hole in Maya's costume? Objection. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Y yes <laughs> Having you call me by my full name is kind of a weird feeling. I guess Von Karma is just rubbing off on Phoenix. You said that my client killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. Yeah, I did. Then what, may I ask, is the bullet hole you police overlooked supposed to mean? Yeah, um, what does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that the victim had fired off a shot. Is that what it means to not fight back? Uh, ah, you're right. It would seem that way. If the victim tried to shoot the defendant, then it would change everything. All right, the wind seems to be shifting. Huh. What is with that are you finished yet laugh? Are you finished yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I love whenever these games do that, because they do that bit quite a lot, where Phoenix will think something, and then the other character will say that thing out loud. Miss Von Karma. It seems that my affair was shot at by the victim. However, that is only grounds enough to support a justified self-defense plea. That is correct. But I'm sure you remember, Your Honor, what the defense clearly said. They rejected justified self-defense and pleaded not guilty. Ah! Now that you... Why, that's right! Which means... The defense has yet to prove anything at all. N no Well, yes, that's true. Furthermore, just the fact that there is a bullet hole in the costume is not enough to substantiate even a plea of justified self-defense. Huh? How so? Ah! Don't just st stand there. Hurry up and tell the court what transpired that day. With the new information we acquired added in, of course. Huh? You mean... by myself? You want me to put together the scenario all by myself? Yeah. Yes, sir! Right away, sir! During the channeling, the defendant saw a chance to stab the victim in the chest. Of course, the victim used the last of his strength to fight back, so... While the two were fighting, the victim took out his gun. The victim took a shot, but because they were too close, he missed. The defendant then picked up on the opening, took the victim's gun, and ended it. Hmm, this scenario you have put together does make sense.
Yes, sir! Well, Mr. Wright, just by listening, it does make sense. However, I won't give up that easily. B please refer refrain from glaring at me like that. Now then, your cross-examination, please. All right, first press. There's quite a difference in height between Dr. Gray and the defendant, and in Adam body strength, and it would seem unlikely that the defendant could have stabbed the victim. Now that you mention it, yeah, I guess. You think you can get away with such flimsy reasoning? Mr. Phoenix Wright. Maya Fey was in the middle of a channeling, was she not? When channeling with the Korean channeling technique, the medium physically changes. With the nurse's build, the defendant could have easily been a match for the doctor. I don't believe it. She even studied up on the Korean channeling technique. Okay, pretty much every Let's Player pointed this out uh, when they played this game. But, if it's a ghost doing it, and you're arguing that she did this by having a ghost possess her, then it's technically not her fault, it's more the spirit's fault. I don't know. Like I said before, I am perfect. Um, uh, about what you were talking about, I didn't quite get it. Um, n never mind, let's continue with the testimony. Of course, the victim used the last of his strength to fight back, sir. So he was stabbed, but the stab wound didn't kill him. But if you think about the blood loss, it was pretty bad. How bad would you say it was? Actually, I went to give blood the other day. And afterward, I felt a little lightheaded and dizzy. I guess the damage was maybe about ten times the Disney dizziness. Ah! S sorry. <clears throat> Two were fighting, the victim took out his gun. Where in the world did that pistol come from? It looks like the victim, Dr. Gray, had specifically bought it for that day. But a handgun? He got it off the black market about two days before the murder. Why did Dr. Gray bring a gun? Was he taking precautions against something? The victim took a shot, but because they were too close, he missed. So, you're saying that the bullet hole in this costume was made then? Sorry, pal, but that's what I think. The two of them were already fighting when a shot was fired. Maya, I'm really glad you weren't hurt. The defendant then picked up the opening and took the victim's gun and ended it. Maya has never fired a gun before in her life. The victim had already taken off the safety. With the safety off, even an amateur like you could fire it by pulling the trigger. Even me? I wonder. <clears throat> now do you understand? If one comma's logic is perfect. This testimony certainly makes us look very bad. But there's gotta be a contradiction in there somewhere. And uncovering it is going to be the to uncover the truth. I can feel it. So the solution for this one is to go over to the part where he says the victim took a shot, but because they were too close, he missed. This is one that trips up a lot of people, but if we go ahead and look at Maya's costume. Earlier, we talked about how whenever something is shot from up close, it leaves a gunpowder burn because, you know, the, the gunpowder fires the bullet and it's really hot, so it leaves those sort of burns around the area. But there's not really a burn to be seen here. So let's go ahead and present it. Missing the tiny hole on this costume will be the prosecution's undoing. Eh? Yeah, what do you mean? This little hole has actually created a huge hole in your testimony. I explain yourself, Mr. Wright. You said the two of... You said the two of them were fighting when the victim fired his gun at point-blank. If that were true, 
Then where is the gunpowder burn on this costume? G gunpowder burn? This is what you testified earlier. When something is shot from point blank, a burn area is left around the bullet hole. Oh! But there's not a single trace of gunpowder burn on this costume. That is a very good point. And what exactly does this mean? It means that when the shot was fired, they were standing apart from each other. Hmm. I'm disappointed, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You think you can punch a hole in my logic with that? With wishy-washy thinking like that, anyone can explain anything away. Then I implore you to disprove my line of thinking. Let's see. In the middle of their fight, the victim pushed the defendant away, and it was then, when they were separated, that he fired. How was that? As if that was even possible. According to the testimony, the wound from the stabbing was very severe. The victim would not have had the strength to push the defendant very far after that. Well, then... That's right. The defendant must have pushed the victim away. After stabbing him, she must have put some space between the doctor and herself. And then, while she was preparing to strike again, the doctor took his shot. There. That should satisfy even you. Hmm, that does make an awful lot of sense. What do you think, Mr. Wright? I must be careful. I can't afford to make a mistake here. Concentrate and think. Something doesn't make sense here. There's a fatal flaw in her argument, Your Honor. Fatal? Flaw? Yow! Very interesting. I would love to see where, you s where this flaw is. Show me something that contradicts my explanation. There has to be a snag in her explanation somewhere. She put some distance between them before rushing to make the, the final blow. But when she was about to strike, the doctor took his shot. There must be a piece of evidence that contradicts this line of thinking. That evidence would have to be the folding screen. You'll remember this from earlier, it has a bullet hole about 80 inches off the ground. Oh, and since I had forgot to do this in the first case, I'll go ahead and say take that into the microphone. Take that! This is the piece of evidence that destroys your logic. What is that? A folding screen? I would like to point the court's attention to the hole in this folding screen. Ah! It looks like you already know what I'm talking about. Who? Where? What? Mr. Wright, your explanation, please. Are these two really that clueless? The bullet went through the defendant's sleeve first, then the folding screen. It passed through at a height of approximately 8 inches off the ground. Which means... When the shot was fired, Maya, I mean the defendant, was not getting ready to strike, but was actually squatting low to the ground. Order, order. This changes everything. Please look at this diagram of the crime scene. The victim, Dr. Gray, was here when he fired the shot. And the bullet hit this folding screen. It hit at this location about 8 inches off the ground. At this time, the defendant was in this area. She's standing here, near the folding screen. Wait a second! We know the defendant was close to the ground based on the height of the bullet hole, but how can you gauge the distance from that? Isn't it possible the defendant was standing much closer to the victim? That's impossible. B but why? You, of all people, should know the answer to that question, Miss Von Karma. If she were shot from somewhere closer, there would be gunpowder burns present. However... There is nothing of the sort around the bullet hole of this costume! Ah! C curse you, Mr. Phoenix Fright! You... Hmm... I believe it has now been proven that... The defendant was standing away from the victim when she was shot at. But do you think this has changed the defendant's situation? 
It changes everything. Honestly, Your Honor, this changes everything. The prosecution has claimed that the defendant was aiming to kill by stabbing. If that were true, delivering the final strike with the knife would be ideal. However, where and what was the defendant doing at the time? Squatting all the way by the folding screen? Exactly. If my Fei was the real murderer, why would she be by the folding screen instead of preparing to strike? <sighs> Upon further consideration, it does make very little sense. Yeah, I figured there had to be a reason. Figuring things out and proving the logic behind everything is your job. Ooh. Alright. With this, the rest of the trial should be in the b the last radius of disaster. You are such a smart man, Mr. Phoenix Fright. To think that you've been able to take a completely hopeless, hopeless case to this point. Now I know why Papa had a tough time with you. Hmm. You amuse me. Ugh. Of all the things to inherit, why did it have to be that smarmy smile? Detective! How dare you damage my perfect logic? Huh? How is it all my fault? You can start repairing your standing by first removing that three-strand goatee. Oh, and rest assured, your punishment will come later. P punishment Fail then, your honor. I think I had, I've had all I can take of this detective's face. I think it's time to call in the next witness. Next witness. That's gotta be Lotta. Very well. This court will take a five minute recess. After we reconvene, we will hear from the next witness.